After 17 rounds of Supercross and 11 rounds of the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship Series for 2012, this Geico Honda team had proven they were the new force to be dealt with. At Steel City, Eli Tomac continued his charge into Blake Baggett's point lead in dominating fashion, going 1-1 for the day after qualifying four seconds faster than even the 450 machines. Eli would now only be 14 points behind Baggett. His teammate Justin Barsha would continue to get good starts and keep everyone pushing for a 2-3 day. Will Hahn and Justin Bogle would not have the races of Tomac and Barsha, but at moments put another red bike in the middle of the orange and green ones pushing the team forward. It would all wrap up on a new track in a legendary city. You know, it's my last 250 race and uh, I'll hopefully I'll be going out and those boys will be saying, thank God he's going out. So. Lake Elsinore, California is famous in motorcycle circles for its legendary Grand Prix in the late 60s and early 70s, and making local Riverside rider Malcolm Smith famous in a film called On Any Sunday. On this weekend, the once locals practice track turned national circuit would host the 12th and final round of the series and had everyone talking. Here we are, Elsinore. Uh, actually just got back from the mule, went and checked out the track because you basically have to have a mule to get around the whole thing. <laughs> you know, it's, it's huge. I like the long lap of it, but uh, it's a little hard underneath. It's like California. I kind of suspect that. They tried their best to put good dirt on, but the dirt's bad underneath, so there's not much you can do. I think the funkiest thing is the mulch and the dirt. Like, just because when it's wet, it's super heavy and super slow. It's fake dirt. California, everything's fake. I'm going to need this bike to hang in my bedroom. Yeah. Mean, Dude, the gear match is perfect. It really does. Prior to the National, press day on Thursday was a chance for Justin Barsha and his Motocross of Nations teammates to debut their Team USA gear and speak to the media. Yeah, for sure. You know, I think it's uh, just a huge honor for me as a, a racer and a, a rider to be chosen for the MX of Nations. It's huge. Uh, you know, it's just the biggest thing that can happen for a racer. And I, you know, a lot of great racers I've like won before, and you know, definitely we're gonna go this year and do our best to try to win it. It's it's just an honor every year. You know, I feel like uh, Blake and Justin Barsha are great teammates, are really driven athletes, and uh, and uh, want to win. Excited to go over there and represent Team USA again. And uh, like Ryan says, go over there, have fun, and, and try to win it. The long racing season was coming down to the last event with a chance to look back at lessons learned and the ebbs and flows of opportunity. It wasn't too good. I was injured most of the year and then had some uh, had some tough races. Ready to go home, get some stuff figured out for next year and come back and uh, and improve quite a bit. So I've just matured as a person all the way around is, is from being an adult in day-to-day -day life and, and also just, uh, you know, every, everyday stuff. Like if that tenth, you know, could have been like a third or, or just somewhere in the top five, you know, we'd be a lot closer or even like in the tree at Southwick, you know, I gave away like five points there. Um, if I if I would have gotten the lead if I didn't crash. So You know, you'd love to go back and undo a couple of motos and you could, you could play the what ifs, you know, but proud of our whole group. Eli Tomac's charge in the last few races had put him within 14 points of Blake Baggett going to the last round and in a position of nothing to lose. Momentum's usually a, definitely a good thing, and uh, coming in without, with everything to gain and nothing to lose is a heck of a lot better position to be in than, than everything to lose. So I, I like his position, and um, hopefully he can keep the momentum going. Yeah, I don't know what I'd really go do, but it would just be cool, just because like I think it would be the first time that guy goes, or it would be the first time that they've wrapped up all three in the lights, you know, East-West Supercross and the Motocross, so it would just be crazy for the team. This would also be Justin Barsha's last ride on a 250 before moving up to the 450 bike and Team Honda in 2013. He wanted to make it a memorable one. We've talked about it before, all I can do is go out there and do the best I can. And uh, you know, I think here at Elsinore, I'll just, uh, you know, if I have to do some Bam Bam or whatnot like that, I'll do it. Yeah, sharpen the elbows, wear some spikes on the gear, and uh, no, honestly, just hopefully make it easy on myself and do what Eli did last weekend. Though they have different lives, Brothers are still brothers, and big moments like a potential national championship are not to be missed. Yeah, I was going to try to make it out last weekend, and uh, unfortunately just got tied up with work and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, that's what happens being in the Air Force and understanding what my job is. But it's, you know, I appreciate every opportunity I get to, to come visit him and, 
I was fortunate enough to see him this weekend, and so excited about this weekend. I think Eli knows uh, what he's got to do, and I think he'll uh, I think he'll go do that. The entire summer during the series had been uncharacteristically hot, but no one was expecting the stifling heat that would arrive with the fans on Saturday. The looming high temperatures were concerned to keep more than just the riders cool. On this day, everyone was offering advice on the challenging Elsinore dirt. I told a couple of the other guys out there it's either concrete or snot, and there's some stuff that'll be piled up that looks good, and it's snot underneath, so yeah. you just got to tiptoe. Five minutes, don't let him forget that vest, huh? <laughs> As the temperature rose, the gate dropped on Moto 1 of the 250s, and Eli Tomac soon found out he was going to be battling more than just the heat for this championship. And I think that's Moosecan of the Red Bull KTM going to grab the whole shot with Barsha on the number 20. Justin Barsha had moved into the lead, but Blake Baggett had one very good reason to put in one of his strongest rides all year in front of a hometown crowd. A championship was in his sights. Here he goes. But he's got a shot at it. Dancing down to the inside, cuts across on the brakes. Baggett saw it coming and takes the lead back. With his father John and Chad Reed looking on, Tomac would eventually work his way up to second behind Baggett, but not before battling Barsha, who wanted to go out of the 250s on top. So oh, he gets him! What? Wow, where was that line? Yeah, I didn't even see what? that line. <laughs> Anything can happen in Moto2, but Baggett has the best possible scenario heading into Moto2. Eli would get one more shot, but the points gap to make up had just grown. The heat from Moto One had taken its toll, and everyone had different needs to cool down. I like the booties, bro. Thanks, they're new. They're Alpine Star. They just came out. I'm the only one with them, though. I like the skate right here. It's good. Maybe we could rip that whole shot. We still need to get a whole shot this year. I know. <laughs> A long season for the Geico Honda squad would come down to the last moto. For Eli Tomac, the odds of a championship had slimmed after Moto 1, but we're still alive because in this sport, anything can happen. And it's Barsha again. No, I think he's going to get edged out. Justin Barsha's last moto on a 250 was more proof that he was ready to move up to the 450 for 2013. Yeah, he's in a great spot right now. The other guys are way back in the pack. But in the back, Eli's 2012 championship hopes were dashed out completely. And yes, it was. It was Tomac. Oh. And that probably is going to do it for Tomac's valiant effort. Baggett would have his own close call, but he wasn't about to let his first championship lie in the dirt with his Kawasaki. I think the track and the... Oh, oh. Baggett! Bag goes down. That is the exact thing that they did not want to see happen. Justin Barsha is going to win the moto here, but the championship goes to Blake Baggett. Lost my left hand. I was all out of control and just like lawn darted my head into the ground and knocked myself half silly. Saw some stars and by that time I was back in the pack. So uh, yeah, it took me half the moto to even get going at all. Yeah, you know, it was a, it was a stressful day for the whole Geico Honda team. You know, obviously we were two guys fighting for a championship and then uh, you know second moto I went out there and rode my hardest and ended up beating Eli and get second point so. For Will Hahn his fifth and fourth place rides gave him fourth overall a season best. I had to learn from people in front of me you know, I got passed a few times and learned and then towards the end of that moto I was able to actually pass Kenny back and learn from him and learn what he was at and uh, where I could be better so 5-4 four for fourth and I'm, I'm pumped. He needed a summer just to get healthy and deliver the results so it was good. As the sun sets in the west on the young guns, some will take time off. Others will get ready to ride for their country and move on to new teams. But it won't be long before they all saddle up together again for the next big adventure called Supercross. Donations, and then uh, like a week after that or two, Monster Cup. And then a week or two after that, I go to Italy. And then I'll come home and start testing for Supercross. So no off season for me. Back to the grind, switching things up and try to, uh, try to improve. Proud to say I'm back with these guys and we're gonna go hit Supercross and come back outdoors and be better than sixth. Yeah, I mean, I'll go home, hunt like a madman for like two weeks, that's what we have, and then uh, do a bunch of golfing, get away from moto, and then before you know it, you're back at Monster Cup. It was quite a 2012 season for the Red Bull KTM team. A historic championship won early by one and memorable rides and experience gained by others for 2013. See the final Orange Assault episode next week at AlliesSports.com backslash YouTube. Give him a, give him a turn.
That's the lady killer right there. Literally the killer. The lady killer.